Well, hello, friends, and welcome to the From Busy to Rich podcast, a podcast designed to help advisors like you increase your profitability, but also the quality of your life. Uh, we are nearing the end of our Practically Pretty series, 10 Truths to Make Your Business Beautiful. Uh, we're in part nine, which is maintenance required. I think that we all know that anything of value requires maintenance. Uh, I remember, Wes, I, I think they're called perpetual but like perpetual clocks, but basically they, they for all the of, of time, they've been trying to create something that would create its own energy to sustain itself. And they haven't been able to like it, it, everything at some point requires maintenance. And and so my point being, this is a problem that is as, as old as humanity. Yeah, that everything requires maintenance. So what is um from a 10,000 foot view, like what, what is the maintenance required? Why, why is this, this, why is this part of uh, this series about making our businesses practically pretty? Yeah. Well, a couple of just real world examples of this, that I think travel well. Um, so last week I, I went to the dentist and um, for, for a bit by choice, like I, I actually made the appointment and, and went there not because like there wasn't something else more fun to do. Um, yeah, it should be anything, right? Yeah. And and the, the this week, Jamie and I and Amit are going to spend a large chunk of money and time. We're driving to Fort Worth or Dallas, and we're going to the Cooper Clinic, which is like this big uh, since 1970 leading in preventative health, where you do these treadmill treadmill stress tests that keeps going on an incline and. And they got you strapped up to all the EKG things. And then they take your blood. They, they pinch your fat. Andy, not that you have any, but people like me have some fat. And then no. the, uh, and they, they, they require you to answer a bunch of uncomfortable questions. Also, because I am 45 years old, they do other things that are uncomfortable that we won't talk about on the podcast. But what I'll tell you is like, there are so many other things that I would like to do other than that. Those yeah. two things. Yes. Yeah. But no pun intended. Um, the the reason I do them is because there's a fundamental truth out there that translates to every aspect of our life. Is is to maintain optimal condition in light of my vision, in light of what I want to become and what I am, or what I'm being. Maintenance is required. Like yeah. you go to those places because I know something. I know that they're going to say, "West, things are great," or "West, things are." good, but here's something that we might want to watch and, and actually some new activity that you could do to not only stay where you are, but increase the, 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 the outcomes of your health or, or the health of your teeth long-term. As an example, I went in the other day and he said, Wes, there's a problem. You got a crack in one of your teeth. So I need you to come back and we're going to put a crown on it. And as fun as like getting a crown sounds like Andy, it's not fun. Yeah, not like the Burger King crown. Did no, I, I, no, you don't get it your way. That it is like you, you get did it, not get it your way. You your get it way, way the dentist wants it, which yeah. involves a needle in the gums and uh, two trips. So, but you know what? What the outcome is if I don't do that is he said, "Well, one day, here's what will happen: is you're going to be eating food, and you're going to bite, and your tooth is basically going to split, and yeah. everything you eat is going to be tough, and it'll be probably on a weekend when I'm not. Right, right, probably right, a, right, right. probably a Saturday morning." Or Friday night, and then right. you're going to live through a weekend. You probably be on vacation. Yeah, and he's like, all happens to put. No, he's going to say you're in town, but you're going to pay for a new car for me. Yeah, that's right. What well, I you're do need buy a snowmobile flight. for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so put it off as long as you'd like, Wes. And so I'm like, now listen, I, I get in there, and so we, we're getting it taken care of. Um, Health wise, same thing. Years ago, she said, Wes, look, and we did a scan on you, and you got a little plaque in your heart. Not bad. Not not wrong. We need your cholesterol to be a little bit lower. So here's what we're going to do about that. And there was a plan moving forward. And actually, you can reverse it, Wes, if you actually do these additional things. And so, again, the, the thing here is to maintain my optimal condition and your optimal condition from a health standpoint and a lot of the vision that I want, maintenance is required. Yeah. And, and that's everybody kind of gets that physically, like physical and health in the place we arrive at. It's a condition we're always trying to pursue. Yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to remember what's the, I wish I remember it just came to mind. Otherwise I would have put it in our, our notes, but, uh, there's that four quadrants of urgent, important, uh, or un, not important, uh, whatever the idea being like, if you wait long enough, an oil change is not urgent. 
It's really okay. not, but it's important, right? And if you wait long enough, it becomes urgent, right? That's right. And so when you're thinking about your, your, your development, your, your business, and you think about maintenance required, um, because I don't want to talk about dentists anymore. Yeah. Uh, um, this is a really practical level. Um, w- what are some of the things that, that businesses do, uh, really, really, really great businesses do to make sure that, that, that they're, they're keeping up on their maintenance? Yeah. So, so a couple of things I think are critical, um, as, as we blow in, I have really two master categories we'll talk about here, Andy. Um, the benefit of checkups, right? So just like the doctor, we can have our own business checkups and we do every single quarter. So again, I think you need more than just six months or once a year. I think every single quarter we need to sit and really think about, all right, what, again, we've, we've got whole podcasts on this. We're not going to retrace some of this, but what is the vision? What, what am I trying to become? What is it that if wild success happens and I'm in an optimal condition in light of that vision three years from today, what's that look like? And then how do I back that down into something that's more urgent, something that's more in front of me that, that is actionable that I can back into a strategy for it and go back and listen to our last podcast. We just did on um, the last session eight where you can, you can have some metrics that help you like your own EKG. If I hit these things is good. I'm healthy. If I don't probably need to redo some of the activities that I'm doing in order to get there. Um, but the benefits of checkup. So every single quarter we, we gather together as a team. And I, and all of us in advance have the vision of the organization because again, I, I need everybody to be on board with what we're doing if they want to, you know, play in our band, if you will. And, uh, and so if we are, then we talk about what we've been doing, how that's been working. And then we, we effectively say, what do we need to change in, in light of that? What, what is, what is the one or two things we can stop doing? Maybe the one or two things we can start doing that are going to help move this in a positive direction. I will tell you another big one here, Andy, when it comes to these is every now and then. I love bringing a coach in um, because a coach is like an outside expert that, that doesn't live in your own, your own narrative. Right. And look at the entire team and can, and look at your vision and look at where you started from, the things you're talking about. And, and a good coach, like we, we talked about Brian Cooper on our podcast before he's our coach for a long time. There's lots of good coaches out there that can help you with this. Oftentimes he'll say, yeah, all that's great. Having observed hundreds of advisory practices in your stage, Wes, I would think about doing this one extra thing or stop doing this, these two things over here. But it doesn't happen unless you do the check in. Otherwise, you'll live life by default instead of by design and wake up three years from today and you've changed nothing. You got just got older. Hmm. You know, I, and I would challenge our listeners with this really specifically is that I, I once consulted with a company. This is probably a decade ago and there was, well, I'm not going to, I'll save the punchline for later. Um, but this company I'd asked the, the, uh, the leadership, I said, you know, do you feel like your team is really cohesive and everybody's on the same page? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, think people get it, you know? And then I talked to these staff and I said, do you feel like, you know, you know, what's going on around here? And they're like, you know, Andy, there's this really weird thing where there's two floors to our building and it literally is like two different companies. I know we all work for the same company, but it's like, and I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, like there's a different social dynamic. There's just almost like a hierarchy um, that's created. There's a lack of collaboration. Uh, we really just don't, we don't see them throughout the day. Like that's fascinating. And, and so I, I went back to the, the head leadership and I said, listen, like, I know you think things are good, but people feel really disconnected. They feel like there's a rivalry. They feel like there's a hierarchy. I said, when's the last time you guys were all in the same room together? And this was like June. And he's like, man, to be honest with you, probably Christmas party. Dang, six months. Guess how many people worked at the company? How many? Eleven. (laughs) Eleven. They did not have to go rent a stadium for everyone to be in the same room, right? It was 11 people. Wow. Right? And the point is, this can happen with three people. Because if you're not stopping for the purpose of stopping, like, you know, I talk about the time. No, no, no. The, the purpose of stop, of resting, right? Like, instead of sleep, I'm going to read. I feel like it's more productive. No, no, no. You can't read instead of sleep. You have to sleep, right? right? right. You know, uh, you know, and, and they're not the same. I know you're not moving very much for when you're reading, but like, they're different. So you have to stop 
and you have to have the purpose to stop and then to listen to everyone. I actually, at one of our events we had recently here in Nashville, I was sitting at a table with three people who work for the same company. And I asked the person on my left, I said, well, like, what's your vision for that? Like, what do you think needs to change in the next six months? And they didn't answer me. They just looked across the table at their boss. And they said, well, <laughs> I have some thoughts on that. And I, and I was trying, I leaned into it and I said, well, I think this is a safe place. So why don't you share those thoughts? And she was like, I don't know if it's a safe place. You know, <laughs> like she didn't say that aloud, but, um, so the point is you have to create time to stop. Yeah. I've learned this in marriage. You know, things are good. Things are good. Things are good. I think things are good. So the only reason I think things are good is I haven't stopped to say, are they good? Yeah. That's, that's the only information. Not even score at all. No, right. Right. We're winning. There's no EKG going on maritally, right. right? It's, yeah. Right, right, right. So again, maintenance required, you've got to stop. And, yeah. and I would submit this thing, and I will give a book recommendation. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time, it is called Sabbath. And I like it because it's, it's a faith book-ish, but it, it talks about Sabbath and the idea of rest from a lot of different faith perspectives. Yeah. And one of the things it talks about is if you want to optimize growth in nature, all things that are physical, you have to rest that physical thing it, it's not about for for plants it's not sunlight and moisture and chemical composition of the soil if you want something to grow it has to rest and yeah if you just grow 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 as in go 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 it will not optimally grow it will actually break because it needs to rest and we we talked about this uh in, in our podcast that we just did on seasons like on on playing music or making noise yeah. And, and how, how true that is. And what we're talking about here is if, if the only thing you have is an on season and you don't have an off season, you can't repair the things that need to be repaired. You can't even check out and see totally what's messed up that might affect you next season. And you can't build yourself up to be prepared to run again. You've got to take the time, those regular maintenance and maintaining optimal condition and light of your vision requires that check in regular benefits of checkup maintenance. Justin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I love sports analogies, and I know Andy, you like these as well. So I've never thought of a sports analogy. You played um, this just a little bit. So, and, and you know that I used to train professional athletes to do that as well. So it's funny that you talk about it when you look at athletes that are in the most elite like conditioning and or performance, whether it's MMA right. at C level or or professional football players, whatever. They go through these same cycles. Like they've got the preseason. And that's really where, where all the development and the growth and the testing and all that's coming in. Once they go into like actual season, it's really just a maintenance. How do we yeah. kind of maintain this level? We're really testing out the growth and everything that we did. But then post season, it's not right back into the, to the growth and development. It's recovery, right? Like you going into an MMA fighter comes out of fight, like it's recovery before yeah. we go back to the drawing board and say, all right, what worked well? What didn't? create a new theory and a hypothesis of room for, for improvement. And then you go into the growth and then you go into the test thing again. And so, yeah. so everything in life at elite levels like goes through this cycle. And so it's a quick way, I think, to find is if you're not doing this, you're, you're probably not operating at an elite level, at least not what you're capable of doing. Yeah, and if it's true of the most elite, which is what we're talking about with the practically pretty company, if it's true of them, then it should be true of you. I mean, it's, it's, I think I've shared the analogy or the story before of a friend of mine who owned a, a, a carpet cleaning business. And the way he was going to optimize his business was not to get twice as fast at cleaning carpets. At some point, like, he's like, no, I had to get other people because I can't just go all the time. Like, I, I can't, the answer is not for me to be 10 times more productive. It's Run faster work the, hard. <laughs> yeah, that's work hard, right? Right. It, it's to get other people involved. And so again, if it's true of professional athletes and it's true of your business as well, which is you have to have required maintenance, I would also submit one other thing, which I hope kind of piques some people's interest. When you go to buy something, I saw this yesterday. I was just on my Facebook. I like to look at Facebook Marketplace and some guy was selling a, a G Wagon. Uh, you know, it's amazing Mercedes and it said impeccably cared for dealership, did it, did all this stuff, service records. And you look at it and this guy was not lying. It, it was on. And so my point is this, you think he got top dollar for his car? Absolutely. So if you're ever thinking about selling your practice, if you could say well-maintained, 
right? I have all these measurements. I have a scorecard. Like if you ever want to have a business that you want to sell someday, if you could sort of so so the show the maintenance records, as in I I've been tracking things, right? Um, my people are not burnt out, right? That's a much more appealing purchase for someone else. Absolutely. Uh, Wes, uh, I lost track here. Sorry. Um, so uh, this is not just true though with your business though, right? It's true financially. We've talked about that relationally stop and, and ask how people are doing spiritually. Uh, you know, they're, they're all connected. And so I think this is true in a lot of areas. Why don't you think that people stop in their company and do maintenance? Yeah, I think we're just so programmed, Andy, to, to, to run fast and work hard. I think that is the MO, the way forward that, in fact, when you first come into the business, the financial business, that really is not bad advice. You, you are given a, you know, a, it made minimally competent at some thing. And then you run as fast as you can, work as hard as you can with that thing, but you do hit the ceilings. Like you said earlier, it's, it, eventually it becomes, I can only run so fast and work so hard with my current level of, of competence. I've got to begin to develop new competencies and actually assess what I want them to be. What do I want to become? So when you're maintaining your, your, your optimal condition in light of the vision and, and using maintenance for it, that involves those checkups that involve stopping. It's, it's a discipline that we see exists across the board in everybody that's doing this at elite. Well, the other one that I want to land on for today is just this idea of working out. Okay. So, you, you know, health wise, again, it's easy to figure out that. At some level, I want to be in good physical condition. I need some sort of regular compounding workout. Yeah. I need some kind of activity. And if you want to continue to evolve into the kind of advisor the clients you're looking for are looking for, you've got to have some level of working out. And I would even basically think of it in terms of preparation um, and, and preparation for meetings. Let's call, let's call it that. And it means not just that, but so when I say that, people are like, oh, yeah, I do a prep day. I, and I hope you do, because that's really important. And we're going to talk about that. But also those meetings you don't even know about yet that, that are going to be the prep you do now that's important in those meetings two years from now and three and five, that if you don't do the work now, you're just not going to become the kind of person capable of engaging at a high level in those meetings. So the common approach is that we, we would think about is prepping for meetings that are on the calendar. And that's why we talk about this all the time. If you're not doing it, highly recommend it. Our planning team, every Monday, we prepare for the next upcoming week's meetings. And what's cool about that is it's group prep. And, and by group prep, everybody's kind of individually looked at it and they've thought about what in the narratives checklist, what may apply for this client and a lot of where the client is, and a lot of the, the future that the client we talked about they're moving towards. But then you get a room of other people. And while you've kind of had these ideas, it's one thing to hear them in your head. And another thing, when you're in a room and you're creating things together, um, oftentimes we will be in a room and we'll come up with an idea none of us had at that in, on, on our private prep because there's something to, to like, to, to dancing with each other in the ideal yep, world. Yep. Yep. This, this learning, thinking out loud is, is like oftentimes in the podcast that the, everybody hears, it's not guys that we, we believe it or not actually talk about these things in advance. And I, I kind of build a rough outline and we were like, mm -hmm. hey, I think here's an idea, but we'll get in here. And in the process of, of conversation, new ideas come up and we just roll with a lot of them because they're so relevant that none of us had prior to this, but it's, this is a big, it, it's the same thing when you're preparing for client meetings. You need that. If you don't have that, that group prep, I would tell you, you need to get a buddy. You need to get a friend that's, maybe you don't have a team, big team yet. That's like, this is their zone. Get somebody else who's in the business say, hey, would you mind every Monday for an hour if you and I talked about cases that we're working on and, and client situations and, and just dance with each other back and forth? I mean, years before we had a big team, my buddy Chris Fulbright, who we're going to have on the show, um, he, he and I would spend you know, a couple hours a week just tossing back and forth ideas that we were thinking about using and new, better ideas came out of that. So I think, okay. yes, prep, but group prep is important to be elite, to, to maintain your optimal condition in light of your vision. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I want to encourage folks, if, if you're not taking the time for this, understand that, you know, it's, 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 it might be the most important time, which is really sad and scary to think about. Like people 
will shorten their sleep, you know, and they'll say like, if you're going to cut anything, don't cut sleep. You know what I mean? Uh, and so just, just remember that, that, that quiet time, that, that, that time where you're just letting ideas come to you and you're processing information. Um, you know, the maintenance of sometimes just quietness and reflection, um, uh, is really, 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 really important. And if you're really, if you feel like you're on the hamster wheel and you can't get off, um, it might be because, um, you're just living, you're believing a lie that maintenance is not required. And it's the, the, the only thing you need to do is more of what you're doing. And I reject that. And I think you should reject that too. Uh, Wes, I'm going to give you the last word. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. So just one other quick little takeaway on this, on this working out, this preparing for meetings side of things where you're stopping and making time because it always feels like, man, I'd rather be doing the urgent thing. Well, this is important and it's going to be supply you with the capacity to live at a new level if you take the time to do it. And you'll notice over the time, people who don't do it, they suffer for it. Um, is, is have time where you're, you're regularly cultivating new ideas using a handful of tools that are very inexpensive. Okay. And that's books, mm-hmm. audio books, podcasts, and conferences. Those, those are when I grew up in this business, I mean, I was always voracious on these kind of things and still am. Now that you get access to different and different levels, the, to, to become more and more elite, the more you do this and the more you, you, but if you're like starting out maybe and you're like, Wes, I can't afford to go to the conference that costs $15,000. Mm-hmm. Well, then go to the one that costs three, you know, go, go take our transform learning series. Or if you say, Wes, can't right now, it's just beyond me. Well, go, go download a $300 module. Um, go, go listen to this podcast every week. It's free. I don't know if you knew that. We don't charge you for this at all. So, um, and there's a ton of great podcasts, a ton of great learning out there that can develop every aspect of your life, but have a diet of that. It, it's like, if you don't eat certain kinds of food and you're a calcium deficient, it's going to affect you. If you don't have a diet of this, like challenging your operational assumptions, new ideas coming in, you will have a deficiency in your capacity to maintain an optimal condition in light of the vision that you have, in light of where you want to ultimately end up. So I just kind of wrap it up with this, Andy, is that um, it's one of those things that's easy to put to tomorrow. And, and it is so easy, though, if you just guard your time, if you if you allocate time for this stuff, both on the daily, but also on those bigger picture quarterlies where you're you're doing your, your checkup meetings on a quarterly basis, but have that daily diet of, of working out the way we've talked about with these new ideas. And, and then you can maintain your optimal condition in light of your vision because you realize maintenance is required and you made it a part of your life. Absolutely. Well, Wes, thanks for your time. And folks, thanks for listening. And as always, uh, and if you want to uh, learn more about those things that Wes talked about, go to WesYoungLive.com and you can learn about those modules or the full Transform series. Uh, thanks for listening as always. Thanks for your reviews. And we'll catch you on our next one. <laughs>